Greetings from Tokyo, I'm Trippin, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, you and I are going to make some custom objective markers. Thanks for joining me in the studio. Shogatsu is the Japanese celebration of New Year's and happens to fall on the same calendar day as most of the Western world. It's generally celebrated between January 1st and January 3rd, and it's marked by families going to the local temple in order to say a prayer for happiness and prosperity in the new year, and also pick up some charms to bring good luck to your house or car. Now, this year, my family and I went to the temple, and as usual, there is a small uh, matsuri or festival on the temple grounds, and local vendors set up booths where you can purchase food and drinks and toys and candy and all sorts of wonderful things. You might have noticed the strange object in the lower left corner of the frame. That's choco banana, uh, chocolate banana. It's a fresh banana dipped in chocolate and covered in sprinkles and marshmallows, and it's kind of amazing. Without shame, I can admit that I had three of them that day, and I have no regrets. Today's video is a lot of fun. We are going to paint some objective markers for Warhammer 40,000. I've actually had some of these objective markers sitting in my collection for a decade. Yeah, I know that's that's not great. In fact, most of the objective markers today that we're going to be working on were created from a kit called the Battlefield Accessories Kit, which Games Workshop no longer makes. In fact, I don't think they've made it for six or seven years. I don't know. Listen, I don't have a huge pile of shame like uh, some hobbyists do. I'm actually pretty good at uh, keeping that to a, a small-ish, smallish pile. I have friends that their hobby room looks like the better half of a Games Workshop store. So I don't feel so bad about the few kits that I have that need to be painted. Whether or not they're nearly a decade old. Let me show you these objective markers and we'll get started. Doing stuff like this can be a lot of fun because it's an opportunity to tell a story. I've combined items from the kit to create this. It's like a fuel depot, a fuel stash. We got some jerry cans, some drums, but it's also rigged to explode. You can see the explosives all around and somebody's punched a knife in the side of one of the drums and I'm going to draw a line of fuel coming down and pooling in the earth around it there. This next one is some artillery rounds and some heavy bolter ammo. This is another weapons cache from that same kit, only I've added a sniper bolt rifle and a satchel charge and some melta bombs the crate's open so you can see what's inside. This one is really interesting. It's made using, again, parts from that, that same field munitions kit. Also includes the Imperial Pilot from the fourth edition starter set, Battle for McCrag. This is one of the first miniatures I ever got, one of the first miniatures I ever painted. It actually doesn't look too bad. I, I'm gonna retouch this. What I'll do is I'll mask him off with some uh, silly putty or poster tack so that when I'm basing this, he doesn't get sprayed. And then here we have a downed Tau drone that has crashed into the earth. Now you'll notice on both of these here, there's some I've applied some green stuff. This is going to work just as sort of a base, and we'll apply texture paint over top of this so that it will look like uh, upturned earth. And then lastly, we've got this. This is just a bit I found online on Cults 3D for free. It's my understanding that this is a reproduction of a Gene Stealer Cults item. Some sort of a hollow, like a like a strategy table with a hologram of a city in it. So that ought to be fun to paint up as well. And sort of as a last bonus, we've got this guy here. This is not an objective marker. It's just sort of a piece of scatter scenery. It's comprised of a bunch of barrels, for, again, from that same field munitions kit. And this base came with it as well. We're going to start by priming the miniatures. In this case, I'm using a white primer because I know that I'm going to be using some yellows and greens and... I want the colors to be punchy and oversaturated. If you want something more grim dark, then you should use a black or dark gray primer instead. Once the primer was dry, I applied the yellow. Honestly, yellow is one of the most difficult colors to paint with a brush, and I just sort of cheat here and use an airbrush whenever I can. Once I had my yellows down, I moved on to my greens. In this case, I'm using a desaturated or sort of olive drab or army green in order to paint all of these chests and crates, just sort of keeping things on theme. 
But if you don't have an airbrush, this is absolutely possible with a normal brush. Just use a little water, thin your paints, and apply two coats for total coverage. Once that was dry, I started applying my shades. This is Games Workshop's Athonian Camo Shade, which is like an olive drab or dark shade, perfect for military items. I applied it generously all across the models, making sure that it wasn't pooling at the bottom. And as I waited for that to dry, I used a combination of Agrex Earthshade and Lamian Medium in one-to-one -to, -one to create the dirt and grime for the barrels. I outlined the edges and then also applied some sort of pools along the top because again, you're gonna have rain and other debris gathering. And then I just worked my way around the models, highlighting it anywhere where there was detail on the ridges, edges, and bases. Once the camo shade was dried, I also applied some Agrax mixture to the bottom edges of the crates to apply dirt or age. When all my washes were dry, I began dry brushing, working my way up through the series of greens to more saturated hues. Then I worked my way around all the models, making sure that anywhere that was going to be silver was painted black first. Now, Games Workshop's Lead Belcher is an incredible paint that usually covers in a single coat, but when I have the time, I like to apply a dark gray or black underneath just to get a better result. And as you can see here, I'm just working my way around all the objectives using Games Workshop's Lead Belcher to cover in all the metallics. That includes the shells, the melt -a bombs and the magazines. I also use it on the large corrugated metal base for the fuel depot. Honestly, this paint is so incredible. Painting it is so satisfying. I could use a whole bottle of it and just paint anything. I then moved on to my other metallics, but when painting a gold, I always like to lay down a brown or earth tone underneath. That just creates a much warmer tone. And then I applied a rich gold over top. When that was dry, I applied Agrax Earthshade in order to shade it and age it down. And then I applied Nuln Oil to all the gray metallic areas. For the Imperial Insignia on the side, we wanna make sure that this looks like it was once white, but has been aged over time and collected dirt on the battlefield. So we use an off-white and cover it with an Agrax Earthshade wash. And then to finish off the barrels, I'm taking a sponge here and some dark gray and just sort of working my way around, adding some wear and tear where I think it might look best. On the palette underneath, we want these straps to be wood, but as wood ages, it actually turns green when it's exposed to the elements. So I'm using an Athonian camo shade here. Now here I'm working on the holographic table. I've gone ahead and painted it white because I know I want to paint a sky blue over top of that. And then once that was dry, I applied a glaze of gullum and blue and you can use, alternatively, any other blue contrast paint. While I waited for that to dry, I just went around and started painting the details like the Aquila and the buttons. I then dry brushed the surface with white to make the edges stand out on the hologram, and then painted in the tactical arrows indicating troop movements using a fluorescent green. With that, all of our base colors are laid in and they're ready for texture paste. I spread this around the models using a texture tool to get the large areas, but when I need to refine my work, I just use a small flat brush. It gives me much more control over how I apply the texture paint. Now, as we retouch our Imperial Pilot here, I'm gonna take a special moment here to call out our very first patron, Adam Fox. Thank you so much, Adam. It's incredible. As someone once said, even the largest avalanche begins with a single stone and you are that first stone. So thank you again for joining the Patreon. It means the world to me. Once the texture paint was dry, I began applying Nuln Oil over the entire surface in order to bring out the recesses. We're just working our way around the models, applying that wherever we've laid down the texture paint. Once the Nuln Oil was dry, I began dry brushing using a medium gray. And the dry brushing is going to bring out the texture of the bases, but leave the recesses darkened. And again, just like when applying the paste, when I need control, I use a small flat brush to do so. And I'm working my way up here to a much lighter color, in this case, almost a pure white. Now on this model, we're only gonna use that on the outside because on the inside to look dark where the earth has been turned up. And speaking of that, here's where we're gonna have a little fun. We're gonna have this fuel pooling, but we're gonna use a known oil to create that sort of dark patch around the outside where the soil is saturated. And then we're gonna paint a pure white here along the barrel and the puddle because as you'll see in the next step, we're actually going to use Games Workshop's technical paint called Tesseract Glow. It's this incredible sort of otherworldly alien looking green fluorescent. 
that pools and puddles really well. You'll see as we apply it here over the puddle, it sort of blends in over those darker tones that we made and it looks absolutely incredible. Lastly, I'm going to apply some decals to the models here, move them into place, and then cover them with Lamian Medium once they're dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and create some wearing and chipping using the sponge and some green paint. And lastly, we'll paint the rims with Steel Legion Drab to match the rest of our army. And our objectives are ready for the battlefield. And now we have thematic objective markers for our games of Warhammer 40,000. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was my genuine pleasure to make it and share it with you. Again, a special thanks to our very first patron, Adam Fox. You are a champion. I can't tell you how excited I was to get the email that I had my first patron. It absolutely made my day. If you'd like to support the channel, there are a lot of ways you can do that. Honestly, we're still trying to grow. If you could just like, comment, or subscribe, that will boost the video in YouTube's algorithm and put us closer to the front page so we can get more views and grow a bigger audience. Or you can always head to the Patreon, like Adam Fox did, linked in the description below. And lastly, you can always check out our t-shirt shop, bakingsodatees.com, where we design and ship one-of-a-kind t-shirts directly to you. If you look in the back there, you'll see a sneak preview of what's coming to the channel soon. I'll see you on the next one.